Hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome back to When the Night Comes. In the last episode, we completed chapter one, and we begin chapter two at the enforcement headquarters, ready for our meeting with August. Now, before I get into today's episode proper, I'd very quickly like to apologize for something I was doing in the last episode. Abby pointed out to me in the comments that I was using he, him pronouns to refer to August. August is non-binary, they use they, them pronouns, and I would just like to apologize for doing that. I feel so guilty and just completely embarrassed that I was doing that. It, it was embarrassing because the game was using they, them pronouns, and not 30 seconds later, I'm going, oh, he seems cool. And I'm like, Brain, Brain, you read their pronouns like less than a minute ago. Why, why did you not connect the dots? Why did you put two and two together, Brain? It, it was incredibly embarrassing and I feel guilty about it because I believe everyone should feel comfortable and using the correct or the incorrect pronouns can directly affect how comfortable someone feels. And I think if you are a decent, courteous, polite person, using the correct pronouns should be easy. Using the correct pronouns is easy. If you can remember someone's name, then you can remember their pronouns. And I like to think that I am a decent, courteous, and polite person. And I, I know that August isn't a real person. They don't care what's the issue. It's, it's not about whether they're real or not. It's the principle of it. It is the principle, the principle, excuse me, of not misgendering someone and not making someone feel uncomfortable. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm very sorry that I was doing that. Thank you, Abby, for pointing it out. I'm gonna try and be more mindful from now on. However, if I do it again, please, please pull me up on that. Alrighty then, let's, let's get into this. I make it to the enforcement headquarters with time to spare after August's thinly veiled threat about tardiness yesterday. I had a terrible night's sleep on scratchy sheets, and I couldn't possibly feel less ready to face my less than friendly superior. I raise my fist to knock on the door, but the muffled conversation that I hear coming from inside has me hesitating. It sounds heated and I glance at the clock on the wall behind me to check the time. I have one minute before I'm sure General Willenheim will admonish me for being late. So... I take a deep breath and I knock. The voices stop suddenly. I hear a clack of heels, and then... Yes. Oh, it's you. They quickly glance at the clock. Oh, you're on time, at least. Congratulations. So sarcastic. I know it's terribly cozy out there, but please come in. I nod politely and quickly step into the enforcer's office. It's beautifully decorated with neatly arranged bookcases lining the walls that are laden with a collection of trinkets and tomes that possibly rivals Ezra's. There's a huge desk in the middle that overflows with reports and letters and a half-empty ink pot and elegant sapphire quill poised and ready. Then, as if I'm experiencing a rather vivid case of deja vu, Piper appears before me, looking decidedly less impressed than she did in the tavern yesterday. Hunter. Nice to see you again, Looker August. Again, we, we should be polite. P 
Piper is a fellow hunter like us. I believe I said I wanted Camille to try and befriend Piper. Hello, Piper. It's nice to see you. She stares at me, her eyes narrowed as her gaze flickers to August, who stands quietly just behind me. Their hands are clasped behind their back, a dark eyebrow quirked almost expectantly. Piper frowns at them, her nose crinkling before she swiftly turns her attention back to me. Yes, you too. I offer her a smile, but the one she offers in return doesn't quite meet her eyes. I appreciate the effort nonetheless. So, you two have met already? In the tavern again, were you, Piper? August sighs heavily when we both fail to respond, and Piper manages to look anywhere but her superior. Anyway... They run their hand along the edge of their desk, inspecting their perfectly dust-free fingertip as Piper huffs in their general direction. I know you have very important business to attend to, but I'm not finished with you yet, Willenheim. <sighs> Is that so? I've given you your mission, you've complained about it loudly. So, pray tell, Major, what else could there possibly be? Piper flinches, and I see her demeanour shift, her admirable determination withering and dying as that word rolls off August's tongue. A harsh reminder of her demotion, and one that clearly stings. I wonder if I'll ever get the chance to ask her about it, to finally know exactly what she did that warranted her being made such an example of. Nice, August. Really nice. You could quite literally cut the tension in here with a dull-bladed dagger. It's not awkward at all. Mm. We, uh, have a meeting, General? Hmm. August sighs, glancing at Piper almost guiltily, but the sorry expression fades the second she meets their gaze. Yes, we do. Is that everything for today, Merriman? Is it it? I wasn't asked. They take a deep breath, pinching the bridge of their nose between forefinger and thumb. You're dismissed for today, Merriman. They stare each other down. And I wonder how the hell they ever managed to become one of the most successful elimination teams in all of Escria. I've heard countless weird and wonderful stories of their partnership, of Piper's unparalleled strength and August's unmatched intelligence. But here, now? All I see is a dispirited hunter and an impossibly tired enforcer. Harry is on his way. I suggest you depart quickly. Shit. She blanches at that, and I can almost see her admitting defeat. Her shoulders relax, and the furrow in her brow fades. Fine. I'll go and look for your possibly a small chimera, but probably a big fucking cat. Oof. One day you'll have to stop punishing me, you know. I said before I wasn't sure who the other polyamorous couple was. I'm pretty sure that one of them is Finn and Ezra. They just have that, like, they seem very close. I'm wondering if the other could be Piper and August. I don't, I don't know. I'm getting weird vibes here because they, they do seem very combative with each other. I'm wondering if the game will give us the option to like, oh, we'll we'll bring them together and we'll have a little thropple. I don't, I don't know. Piper grabs a set of expensive looking daggers from the chair in front of the desk, strapping to them her, let's try that again. Piper grabs a set of expensive looking daggers from the chair in front of the desk, strapping them to her back with haste. 
She pauses in front of me, and those dark eyes soften as she meets my gaze. See you around, Hunter. Enjoy your important meeting, and remember what I said. Foot. Arse. She chances another glance at August, and they suddenly become very interested in studying their perfectly manicured nails. With a wink, she then fully spins to face August, squaring up to them playfully. The Enforcer towers above her, still uncaring, still unbothered. Twat. And with that, she turns on her heel and slams the door so hard it shakes in its frame. August walks around the back of their desk, practically falling into the well-used leather chair. And again, I'm gonna grab that for thumbnail purposes. I scan the piles upon piles of paperwork that litter the surface, taking in the countless reports and letters, scribbled diagrams and gruesome drawings. I get the impression August is in over their head. The disorder of all this information makes my fingers twitch. They watch me carefully, stifling a yawn with a trembling hand. I know. Trust me, I know. As much as I hate to admit it, we've got nothing. As of right now, I suspect everyone in this town, as should you. Though I may not really know them just yet, I sense that this kind of vulnerability I'm seeing is rare. August doesn't strike me as the type to admit defeat so easily, and something more serious than the usual stress of the job seems to be lingering under the surface. After what I witnessed back in Ezra's shop, I can't help but wonder what they were like before all this. The way the young witch looked at them. It was pity. Ezra pitied August. August huffs a quiet laugh and relaxes back in their chair. And for the first time since we met, they seem to let their guard down. I don't know why Harry decided you were the right person for this job above all others, but I trust him implicitly. So, whatever plan he has for you, we had better make it work. Indeed, why... Why were we picked for this? Piper got f well, she didn't get fired, she got demoted. We were brought in to replace her. If Piper is so skilled, then I find it unlikely that, you know, Piper mishandled evidence or like did anything like that. Maybe it is just this is taking so long, we're losing so many people you're emotionally invested, we need fresh eyes and an objective mind, shall we say. And I, I believe Camille did say that she was the most promising hunter from wherever she was from before. I, d I don't know. They pause, staring me down with those icy blue eyes. No. Are you ready to begin? I think I am. Yes, let's start. Always general and it's a flirt option. So Camille, as I said before, Camille, she likes to have a joke. When she's on duty, you know, and things are serious, like she's, she's in work mode, like no jokes, no little sniggering, none of that. Like it is, it is work time. However, along with liking jokes, Camille is a terrible flirt. I feel emboldened as that piercing gaze bores into me, something twisting deep in my gut. I lean forward in my chair to make sure they see me. Really see me. I can't wait to see where our partnership takes us, General Willenheim. August presses their fingers to their lips, appraising me. Oh, really? I think we can achieve absolutely anything together if we truly want to. Though they're clearly trying to hide it, 
I see that lips twist into a sly grin. Yes. And you state this after knowing me for a mere day and a half. Hmm, how bold. How bold indeed. I know what I'm capable of. And you're quite prolific, you know. Their long, dark lashes kiss the tops of their lightly flushed cheeks. A pretty shade of dusty rose painting their pale skin as they lean in. Closer. Closer. Close enough for me to see the flecks of violet that swirl at the outer edge of their impossibly blue iris. Oh! They're actually blushing! I didn't notice that! Look at that! Oh! That's cute! August is magic, overflowing with it. It pours out of them in waves. I can feel it deep in my bones and settling upon my skin. Call it a gut feeling. <laughs> a quiet, careful laugh. And suddenly they don't look quite so tired anymore. I suppose you hunters hold quite the advantage over me with your gut feelings don't you? August tilts their head, their face doing something strange, an expression too quick to catch appearing before they settle back into that impeccable ease they've mastered so wonderfully. They curl the corner of a page that settles beneath their fingertips where their hands have drawn closer to me at the edge of the desk. They clear their throat, but their next words sound noticeably husky. Regardless, I do hope you're right, Hunter Abilene. They pause. Rather, I look forward to testing your theory. I smile, genuine and warm. Me too. And please, call me Camille. We're going to be partners after all, aren't we? That's very well. But you will still call me General. Okay. <laughs> calm down, Callista, calm down. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Indeed, General. I laugh, but I nod my agreement. Of course, General. I hear footsteps in the hall, and August quickly rises to their feet. They straighten their clothing and tie their sash a little tight. Tighter, excuse me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm too flustered. I'm too flustered. Oh God, it's happening already. Jesus. Okay, let's, let's, let's try that again. Calm yourself, Callista. Calm. Don't think of the general. Don't think of them. They straighten their clothing and tie their sash a little tighter. I follow their lead and move to stand by their side. My heart hammering triple time in my chest as those footsteps draw nearer. There's a distinct clang of metal, of armour and heavy boots. Then the door swings open and an imposing figure enters the room. His gaze flickers between myself and August, his expression stern and almost emotionless. I've heard many tales about Harold Addington III, and as he stands before me, I feel a certain sense of pride that he would choose to summon me to deal with such a vital case. He's adorned in the standard enforcer colours of black and gold, but his outfit is far more regal than any of the other high-ranking officials I've seen. A wide smile breaks out across his scarred lips, and he pulls August into a tight embrace, a deep, comforting chuckle rumbling in his chest. Old friend, how the devil are you? It's been a while. Too long, I say. He pulls away, still firmly holding on to August's shoulders. You look exhausted. Have you not been sleeping? August offers him a wry smile as Harry drops his hands. I'm trying to sleep. Does that count? Harry throws them a look. Something stern, but edged with a certain fondness. One that a father might give to their child. I was about to say, is this the other poly couple? No, 
Not with that last line, absolutely not. At least I hope not, Jesus. Look after yourself, Augustus. August nods once, still smiling as Harry turns to stand before me. Hunter, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I can finally put a face to all those impressive reports I've read. He offers me his hand, and I eagerly take it. It's a pleasure to meet you too, Lieutenant General Adam... That's... I want to say Adlington. I don't know why. It's a pleasure to meet you too, Lieutenant General Addington, sir. He smiles warmly, keeping his grip on my hand, his other holding my forearm. That's a power move. The, the handshake he's referring to, it's, um... Oh god, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I do like watching non-verbal analysis videos in my spare time. And when you, when you shake someone's hand, but then your other arm comes around to kind of touch their, their forearm, it's kind of like a, I've got you. It's not exactly like a sign of dominance, but it's like a, you can trust me type of thing. However, because that's become such a, um, such a well-known thing, it's now more often viewed as like a, I shouldn't trust this person. Why are you, why are you doing this? type of thing. Hmm. Uh, he smiles warmly, keeping his grip on my hand, his other holding my forearm. Harry is fine. None of that formal nonsense. If we're going to be working together for the foreseeable future, we might as well get familiar, wouldn't you agree? So I, I will just say, I haven't played this game before. This is blind. If you're watching this and you have played it, Please don't spoil me. As you can see, we, we got to where I had played up to in the uh, the first recording. The, the skip button is uh, dulled out. Um, what I wanted to say... Just... Is it bad I'm getting flashbacks to Frozen, Coco, The Incredibles 2, and Big Hero 6? Specifically, I'm thinking of Hans, uh, Ernesto de la Cruz, and f I can't, I can't even remember their names in Incredibles 2 and, uh, Big Hero 6. I just know they had shitty twist villains, and I'm like, my, my twist villain alarm is like, mm, I don't. Oh, I, f I feel guilty because I'm judging this guy on <laughs> preconceptions from other things, but I'm like, I don't, I don't trust no one. You're not romanceable, so I can't trust you. Of course, uh, uh Harry. <laughs> he laughs, and I feel incredibly relaxed in his presence. Now, let's get to business, shall we? August hands him a standard issue file, sealed with wax bearing the Scarlet Enforcer emblem. They watch me carefully as Harry breaks the seal, a heavy sigh falling from his lips as he quickly scans the report. He closes his eyes, handing the papers back to August before he turns his back to us both. A silent moment passes, and Harry rounds his shoulders, clicking clicking his neck before he faces us. You know, I've worked for the Enforcers for nearly 30 years, and I've never felt quite so useless. We've lost some of our best, our brightest, kindest. Oh. So it's... It's not civilians being targeted, it's hunters and enforcers. Well, well, that would explain why Piper might be too close. It did say in the Codex entry that hunters tend to stick together because, you know, the enforcers, they hold so much power, but they just sit behind desks. So maybe Piper wasn't able to sufficiently investigate the deaths of the Hunters, and so that's why we've been brought in. Maybe the other Enforcers accused her of, um, 
Like, oh, you don't care about us. You only care about the hunters who have died. Ooh. Harry pauses, the waver in his voice evident as he composes himself. I am truly at a loss, and I'm finding it hard to remove my emotions from the equation when it's my own people being needlessly slaughtered. August averts their gaze, stealing a quick glance at me, seemingly sussing my reaction, but also giving Harry a moment of privacy. Nothing can bring them back, but we can bring those responsible to justice. Suddenly, it hits me. The victims were hunters, weren't they? Yes, they were hunters, just like you. Just hunters then, not not hunters and enforcers. Ooh. Well, this makes it rather personal, doesn't it? Harry huffs a quiet laugh, clearing his throat. I know we're putting a great deal of responsibility on your shoulders, but I have never-ending faith that you're the one who can help end this madness. Do you have any questions? Ask about the victims. Are there any patterns? Um... Ooh, they're... I hope we can ask both, because they're both good. They're both such good questions. Um... Camille, Camille would focus on the victims, I think. She has such a camaraderie for her fellow hunters that I think maybe her emotions would get in the way. Just a little bit, you know, rather than focusing, oh, let's be logical, da-da-da. I think she's a little bit more inclined to ask about the victims. How many victims do we have so far? August looks at Harry for guidance, and Harry nods his permission. Four, but we anticipate more. The victim has shown up every seven days for the past month. Okay, so... Four technically doesn't mean we have a serial killer on our hands. I think you need five to be classified as a serial killer. Which is... That isn't exactly a plus, just just a little bit of trivia, I guess. And they show up every seven days. Hmm. So may maybe the killer needs to rest? Hunters do have, um, they're stronger and quicker. So maybe we're looking for someone that you wouldn't expect. Ma Ooh! Maybe they're going to set this guy up as like the twist villain, but then he's a twist twist villain. He's innocent. I don't, ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Yes. With the most recent being six days ago, which is when I called for you. Enough is enough. So we're going to have a murder any day now. Oh, God. We're due a body, if our calculations are correct. Harry clears his throat, twists the gold band on his finger. I'd like you to concentrate on the latest victim for now. Male, 46 years of age, a general. He was one of our best. We owe him this. Okay. I take a deep breath before I ask my next question, feeling immensely guilty before it even falls from my lips. Were all of them burned? I saw the ash and the charred ground. Each body has been burned very badly, yes. To the point where we cannot determine what wounds they sustained beforehand. Okay. I would guess the burning is to disguise that. Okay, so we, we don't know the cause of death. That's interesting. If if I was a killer, the reason why I'd try and conceal what, you know, the, the cause of death is if it would be very unique. Does that make sense? Like, the, the killing blow is so unique to you that you're like, I have to burn off the evidence. That... 
Not even with magic? He shakes his head, exchanging a look with August, one I can't quite place. Not even with magic. And are there any patterns? I'm so, I'm so glad we got to ask both. Other than the timing of the murders, are there any other patterns I should be aware of? Harry's mouth twists into a grimace, and he shakes his head. I... I hope you don't think ill of me, but I'd rather not tell you at this point. Sir! Can you explain why? He and August share a look, and August seems perplexed by this statement. Harry. Harry places his hand upon August's shoulder. A reassuring touch, a smile. Then he's back looking at me. Please, just trust me, both of you. I want you to go out there and see things with your own eyes. Utilize your abilities. Then we can discuss what we've already discovered. So I'm, I'm guessing the point he wants to make is I want to see how good you are before I fill you in. However, one, that could get us killed. If whoever is doing the killing is targeting hunters, we are in that victim typeage. Two, just just fill fill us in, please. Please, I'm I'm nosy. This is a complex case with many intricacies, but I think it's important that you don't let our opinions cloud your judgment. As terrifying and as baffling as this may seem, I see where Harry is coming from. I don't want to be influenced by an investigation that's so obviously failing. So, where would you like me to start? I almost expect them to tell me to figure it out myself, but Harry surprises me. Well, the most obvious of places would be the Ibeck. Uh? The what? A curious pair are the Woodridge twins. They've taken up residence in the old church in the middle of town. I'm sure you've seen it. Have you seen it, Camille? I saw it all right. Big, imposing, and very obviously dilapidated. Ooh, one second, my time is about to go off. Okay. Yes, I did notice it. It's quite hard to miss, but I assumed it was empty with it being in such a state of disrepair. We can only dream that it becomes vacant, unfortunately. August clenches their fist, the faintest flicker of magic shimmering in their palm. They're a plague upon this town, spouting their drivel and preaching to the dumb and ignorant. They're idiots. Augustus. August takes a deep breath, their magic dissipating. Right. Sorry. Well, I'm not fond of them, if you couldn't already tell. Harry and I share a glance, and he smiles warmly, winking at me. Oh, I think we got the picture. Just about. Now, as I said, I suggest you start with them. Just see what you make of them. You might need to play along with the woman. She tends to favor playing games. Anything to baffle you. Have they already been questioned? Are they dangerous? Are they human? Harry shrugs, and August's annoyance at him being so unbothered is obvious. Yes, they're human, and yes, they've been questioned. Hunter Merriman saw to that, but she and the woman have a rather tumultuous relationship. Their alibi is solid. They have a guard, a human who has connections to Clan Casimir. She has no reason to support the Ibeck, other than just doing her job. I'd still be interested to hear what you think of her, though. So, in theory, they're harmless, but they do have the people's ear for some bizarre reason. And apparently they're spouting nonsense and drivel, okay. 
They prey on fear, and the town is infected with that right now. Be cautious of them. They certainly won't take kindly to you. Oh, I think the General can handle them just fine. Have some faith, August. <sighs> August waves their hand dismissively, wandering over to a filing cabinet that's nestled in the far corner whilst muttering something under their breath. A warm hand touches my arm. We trust you, Camille. Now, once you've spoken to them, I suggest just going where your gut tells you. There are plenty of other Lunarians for you to get to know, so just take today to really find your feet. Okie doke. And with that, I am going to end this episode off right here. In the next one, I presume we're going to go question the Woodridge twins, but until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.